We're going to use a moderately priced tester to help diagnose opens and shorts. The Power Probe ECT 2000 is a specialized diagnostic tool to diagnose open and short circuits in wiring. It works with power removed from the circuit being tested to prevent damage to shorted B plus wiring. Now I know that some people like connecting a circuit breaker in place of a fuse and then trying to disconnect lines to figure out which one's got the short. But I think we'll show you that this is far more efficient. We're also going to have to find various types of circuits. We're looking for shorts and opens. The ECT is an efficient way of diagnosing these opens and shorts, much more efficient than using a circuit breaker and disconnecting wiring. Here it is, is a number of pieces here. We've got adapters at the top for plugging into the light fuse, uh, light sockets. We've got a wireless receiver up there in the lid. And then the top of the bottom in the yellow is our various adapters and insulation piercing system. And then the blue one at the bottom is the transmitter, which hooks to battery plus and the signal being tested. We're going to talk about this because it looks simple on the surface, but there's some complexity to testing automotive circuits. And there's some fitness in doing it in an efficient manner. So here's our two pieces. The transmitter on the left is going to inject a 100 milliamp AC signal into the circuit being tested. And it's going to use the wireless receiver to check for the presence of the signal. If it's at normal levels with normal loads, it shows both will show no, no problems. If we have a short or an open, we'll show you how the indicators on the wireless receiver. They both have an audible tone to alert you to problems, which will help you in diagnosing later on. Here's what it looks like when we hook it into a circuit. First, we hook the transmitter into the battery plus and battery minus. It's using these two to reference the signals. Then we're going to inject our 100 milliamp signal. Now, when we inject this signal, we're going straight to ground. We're going to have a weak signal compared to an open circuit. We can detect it. Notice this thing at the top is saying we're shorted, and it's to the right to the right of where the detector is now. So unlike the ohm meter, this is going to be able to give us a direction of which direction the short is in. There's a little more to this. Let's look at this. This wire probe at the top, we can insert it down in there. Typically, if you'll notice from the left over here, it shows you holding this entire left side adjacent to the wiring harness to detect things. That improves receiving the weak signals. The open signal is pretty strong. We can stick that probe down and find an open signal. And then we've got our signals on the side. The top LED tells you there's an open circuit. Doesn't give us a direction because we can't find an open. And then the other two LEDs below it are the short indicators. They indicate the direction of the short from where we are now. The bottom two LEDs indicate the direction to the short or ground. They point you in the direction of the ground to complete circuit. Now, this is unlike what you'd get with an ohmmeter. We would not have no direction. We don't know we have a short. That's where the improvement comes. Now, there gets to be some specialized situations you need to be aware of. The receiver detects this weak signal in the wiring. Now, it can be canceled out if two wires are running parallel with each other carrying the signal in opposite directions. In this case here, here's a simple drawing shown by the manufacturer of what happens if we short in the wiring harness and the signal shorts to the return ground. Quite often in the wiring harness, the ground returns back along with the signal line. Let me show you just such a situation. Here's a return circuit that is in the same wiring harness as the signal. We put a short around this signal. Now notice, this is going back up to near the brake switch back up underneath the dash and the ground is under the driver's seat so the B plus and the ground are running together in that wiring harness returning to the front of the vehicle part of the way in that part of the circuit you would not be able to observe a short indication because it would be missing the two signals are passing each other in opposite directions because we've shorted to signal ground now have we shorted to chassis ground this would not be the problem we would not have a problem finding chassis ground problems. So just be aware, if it's a short to signal ground, that's a different breed of cat. It's going to cause it to read, it maybe had dead spots in the wiring harness. An open gives us a much bigger signal. It'll be quite larger, much easier to find. And what's going to happen, we've got the open as we run it down the line, and we don't have to get very close. It will go off when we cr cross over the open circuit. So it's an easy way to find it. We're going to have different ways of connecting to look at these two. 
Let's talk about injecting a signal for an open circuit. A lot of people recommend that you disconnect wires to look for open circuits. We don't. Our suggestion is what we've been talking about all along, use a pattern. And we're going to use an adapter to decide where to hook it up. The failure pattern indicates two brake lights are not working, one is. Now what does that tell us? Well, we can see by the green on the right, part of the circuit is getting full B plus, so the brake switch, the fuse, and everything and from that point up is working. But just below the splice, we have two lights that are not working. We've already been telling you that's pointing you to the problem. Here's another example. This is not what we have on our particular vehicle. This is an example we're showing you. We are going to have some open circuits we need to look at later. But you see what we're going to do here. Let's take and inject our signal. We can use any one of our adapters here. In this particular case, since we have lamp assembly on the rear for the left where one of our lights is out, we're going to have to use the uh, back probe adapter in this case. But we can inject a signal in either place. We can inject it here with the bulb removed if we wanted to. The reason we remove the bulbs is we need to do that for checking for open circuits. Otherwise, it's going to show a, a complete circuit. So if we open the, the two bulbs, remove both of them, then the, we are definitely going to get an open. It's looking for going back to ground, and it can find a ground if it's connected. So as we go in here and take our tester and connect our signal, we start checking for it, and it indicates an open. Once we get above the open, the signal disappears. Our diagnostic direction would already have told us to go look at that splice because they're both converging on that point. So that would give us a good indication of where to look. But let's talk more about what we're looking at here in short testing. When we're testing for shorts, we have a procedure that will increase the accuracy of circuit tracing. And here's the factors you need to be considering. Shorted circuits will have stronger indications than a circuit with a normal load. Circuits with a normal load will show a weak short signal. The thing to remember is short signals can be canceled if the two wires that carry the signal in opposite directions are in the same wiring harness. And we've shown you an example where that could happen. So here's the way we'll be doing, doing this. Now during most short testing, to make our life simpler and to reduce the number of false indications, we remove the bulbs. That makes it easier, looking from the back. You could pick either way. There, the problem is with this circuit, as short in any part of it would cause the same problem. So there is no right or wrong way. Pick a convenient spot. If you want to start at the fuse, do it like we did on the right. If you want to start from a bulb, do it like we do on the, on the left. Either way will get you there. They both are going to show the same thing. Try to use the two together. For instance, if you went to inject it at the back on the right with the right, the right bulb, it would point toward the front. When you go to the front and inject at the fuse, it points toward the back. So with the back indicating it's going in the middle, the front indicating it's going to the middle, you know somewhere in the middle is a short. It works the same for both systems. So look at what you're doing. Look at the diagrams. My first indication is to go show you what it looks like on a car, but we want you to learn to use diagrams. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the mode. The receiver starts up in pulse mode. Strong signals will give rapid pulses. Weak signals will give lower, slower pulses. And if you notice, the one on the right is blinking much slower than the one on the left. The one on the left is stronger. The one on the right would be the type of indication we'd get if we had a normal circuit with a load. The one on the left is what we have when it's a true signal. Now, one of the things we can do to make our life easier is the receiver can be set to detect only the strong signals. And we do that by pressing the yellow button over there that says press the set. When the light's on, we press the button of strong signals there. When we go put it on a weak signal, the lamp does not light because it's already set for a high sensitivity. So any of those lamps we didn't remove would not show us a false signal. Yeah, the parallel circuits where the current going in two directions will also cause a very weak signal. Now we're going to go take this product and troubleshoot our problems on our problem vehicle for our case study.